got a quick question for you. Ever wonder what would happen if you went dry suit diving and you had a catastrophic failure and it filled up with water? Let's jump in the pool and let's find out. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. Wait, well, you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now, sitting behind me here is Mr. West. This is one of our dive masters. And you probably recognize him from a previous video. He was actually our dive master that won that Orchid Torch lot during our company Christmas party. And Wes is actually here tonight to take his dry suit course. And we're doing the SSI dry suit course with him. And we're going to be going to the pool and we'll schedule his dives for this class during a different date but tonight during the pool we're going to be going over donning and doffing the suit how to put it on you know how to put your gear on with a dry suit some of the considerations that we're going to look at too is what do you do during a failure or if you get a sticky inflator and things like that so we're going to be going over all the dry suit skills with him but we're also going to be making a video tonight for you guys on dry suit failure and we're going to be looking at what happens during a catastrophic failure when your suit completely fills up with water and I've actually got one of my older dry suits. This is my OS Systems Telus. I talked about it previous in a previous video about it coming delaminated. It's a tri-laminate material and it's come delaminated. It means it's no, no longer waterproof. And I'm actually going to be using this uh, suit tonight and I'm going to be causing catastrophic failures. I'm going to be opening up the neck seal. I'm going to be unzipping it and letting that suit completely fill up with water because I get asked a question all the time, can you swim up with a dry suit that is full of water? Well, we're going to answer that question tonight. All right, guys, so we're here at the local YMCA, and I've got my dry suit student, Wes, over here, and we just finished up his skills, so I thought this is going to be a great time to do a catastrophic failure. Now, the first thing that you will notice is I'm a little bit wet already. Remember, this suit is the one that's already failed. It's where it's become delaminated. Plus, I just did a flood drill with him in the water anyways for one of his dry suit skills, so my suit's already a little bit wet. And what suit am I wearing? I've actually got a double layer fleece jumpsuit. This is just a Polar Tech undergarment for most dry suits, and it's a really good warm dry suit. But we're gonna see what happens to my buoyancy when I do a catastrophic failure. Now, the two failures that I'm gonna do, one, I'm gonna open the neck seal, let the suit fill up as much as possible. Then if I have to, I can lay on my back, unzip the front zip here and let water in that way. And then once the suit is completely saturated, I'm gonna zip it back up. Now, once again, I'm in water, the suit's in water or the suit's full of water, it should not technically affect my buoyancy. A lot of people think it will because once my undergarment here is wet, it's gonna affect my buoyancy. Now, before I go any further with video, I do wanna do a disclaimer. Please do not try this at home. I am a dry suit instructor. This is something I teach my students and this is something I test them on. I do make all my students flood their dry suits so that they can understand what happens during a catastrophic failure. But we're gonna see exactly what happens today. We're gonna to see if I can do some general basic scuba skills with a flooded dry suit. Now, no, obviously you're not gonna sit down there, try to hold perfect trim, take your mask on and off, but we're gonna see what happens with a completely flooded dry suit and see if I can still get neutral buoyant, buoyant with it, but more importantly, see if I can swim up without having to ditch any weights. Because to be honest with you, I personally do not believe that a completely flooded dry suit is gonna affect my buoyancy in any way. But with that being said, let's jump in and let's see actually what happens. All right guys, so to start this uh, test out real quick, I'm just gonna show you that um, I'm neutrally buoyant and I'm gonna go ahead and flood the suit. So I'm gonna start by opening up my neck seal the best I can. You can see that my exhaust port on my left shoulder there is venting air out as well. So I got air coming out in two parts. And I am getting negatively buoyant because the suit is filling up. It'd be no different than if you say took a five gallon bucket and filled it up with water. It is gonna be negatively buoyant. It is gonna kind of pull you down. Um, but what I'm gonna actually do here is open up the suit and I'm gonna stand up because there's quite a bit of trapped air in my legs where my knees were bent. Um, so there's still quite a bit of air. You can see it coming out of my neck seal now. Just simply by standing up, 
it allows that extra air to come out. Now, once I've got all the air out of the suit and it's completely um, filled up with water, I'm gonna go ahead and zip it back up and show you that I am negatively buoyant. And I think anybody's gonna understand that if you've got a sealed container, in this case, a dry suit that wraps around you and you fill it up, it is going to be negatively buoyant. Now, towards the end of the video, we will talk about how much weight I'm wearing and I'll show you my rig specifically. But I'm also wanting to show you that you can still get neutrally buoyant even if your suit is completely full. Now, I wanna talk specifically about my BC real quick. My BC is only a 22 pound bladder. That means it's 22 pounds of lift, which for my size and my body type or whatnot is absolutely perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get negatively buoyant again. I'm gonna do the exact same skill, but this time I'm gonna see if I can get neutrally buoyant by using the suit as the lifting device. And I know this is the age old argument. Do you do buoyancy control with the suit? Do you do buoyancy control with the BC? In all honesty, I do both. And the reason I do both is because my suit um, or all my rigs, if you will, are balanced rigs. And I usually just put just enough air in my suit to eliminate squeeze. But since I'm diving what's called a balanced rig, and I never overweight myself by taking that squeeze out of my suit and adding air, it actually still makes me neutrally buoyant regardless of the depth I'm at. So with that being said, I wanted to see if maybe in this case, I had not only a dry suit failure, but also had a BC failure. Would my suit still hold air and get me neutrally buoyant? Now this next part, this is not meant for bragging rights or anything. I just wanted to show you that in a catastrophic failure in a dry suit, you could still do every single thing that you could normally um, in any other suit out there. So your skill set should not change. Now here I'm just showing you in a flooded dry suit, I can hold perfect trim I can still move through the water column as if nothing was wrong now please don't take this wrong way and think I'm telling you that if you have a catastrophic failure that you should continue your dive you shouldn't by all means you should go ahead and abort your dive and head back up to the surface but if you were say in a cave if you were inside of a shipwreck or whatnot and this occurred you could still safely get neutrally buoyant and work your way back out to the exit point yeah it's going to be cold yeah it's going to be uncomfortable but you could do it without panic. Now, once I get back over to the, where I'd started uh, the underwater footage at here, um, I'm going to actually demonstrate an, an emergency ascent or what's called an emergency swim ascent. And I'm also going to demonstrate a normal horizontal safe, slow ascent, just to show you. And I'm actually gonna take all the air out of my BC as well. This is gonna simulate that I'm completely out of air. I can't put air in the BC, I can't put air in the suit. And I'm gonna show you that if you are properly weighted, if you are not overly weighted, you could still swim up with ease with a completely flooded dry suit or a complete dry suit failure. And then once I get to the top, I'm gonna to show you that I too can maintain positive buoyancy, even if I have to orally inflate my BC, which in an out of air situation you would have to, um, I could still maintain positive buoyancy simply because I'm not overweighted. And you'll notice when I do these two skills, I'm not removing any weight whatsoever. So here I'm simulating, I had a dry suit failure, maybe even got a BC failure. And I'm just going to perform a normal emergency swim ascent, the same skill that we are taught or we teach all of our uh, open water students. I could very easily swim up. And then if I need to, I can inflate either power inflate or oral inflate. And even, even in a 22 pound lift bladder, it very easily holds me at the surface. Now I'm going to go down and I'm going to do that skill one more time, but it, instead of doing an emergency swim ascent, I'm actually going to do a horizontal ascent. This is what you should actually do at the end of any given dive. So I'm going to make a slow, safe ascent, no faster than a foot every two seconds. I am going to get neutrally buoyant because we're not doing a BC failure. We're simply doing a dry suit failure. So my dry suit's full of water. I'm going to get neutrally buoyant as if I'm swimming. And I'm going to slowly 
make an ascent horizontal. And I've showed you how to do this in previous videos. Um, and this is exactly how you should make ascents. Uh, a lot of times divers will always want to come up head first and you don't have to do that. You should really always try to come up the best you can horizontally simply because of the way pressure works. If you're head first or if your head's higher than your feet, then that means you're going to be decompressing more out of your head than your feet because pressure is not equal in a vertical sense. Pressure will always be equal in a horizontal sense. So as I'm coming up here, I can decompress if I need to evenly throughout my body. And even with a flooded suit, I can still maintain neutral buoyancy. I can still come up very slow at a slow, safe pace, and I can head up to the top. Now, just for fun and before we get out of the water here, I'm going to go ahead and make a slow, safe descent just to show you that a lot of times it has nothing to do with the air that's in your suit or the air that's in your BC. A lot of buoyancy control is done with your breathing. And if you have trouble with buoyancy, then do me a favor. Get up with your local SSI center and check out the Perfect Buoyancy class. I'll put a link down below for our Perfect, perfect Buoyancy class and you can read up on it and what all skills that you're going to learn in it. But if you need help with your buoyancy control, please get up with your local SSI training center and let them teach you that Perfect Buoyancy class. I promise you it's going to be beneficial to you, especially if you have buoyancy issues. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to end the underwater session of this video and I'm going to head out and we're going to talk about the equipment that I'm wearing, how much weight that I'm wearing, because a lot of people make the misconception that in a dry suit you actually have to wear a lot of extra weight. And I'm going to fix to show you that that is simply not the case. All right guys, so I just got out of the water. We just finished up with my dry suit student. And as you can tell, I am full of water. I don't think I've ever had this much water in a suit before. Um, but with that being said, before I kind of show you how much water's in the suit, I want to talk about the equipment that I'm using because one of the misconception is, is when you dive a dry suit, you got to have heavy fins. You got to have backplate wings. And yes, I am diving a backplate wing. But as you can see, it's a soft plate. It doesn't even weigh a pound. I'm not wearing an aluminum plate. I'm not even wearing a steel plate. As far as weights, I have absolutely zero weights up front. Now, all my rigs are what's called balanced rigs. I do not dive ditchable weights. And as we can tell from this video, I didn't need ditchable weights and I had a catastrophic failure. Looking on the back now, I will state I've got trim pouches back here in the back. And in each trim pouch, I simply have a three pound weight. So there's a three on this side, there's a three here. That's a total of six pounds with a double layer fleece jumpsuit in this dry suit. And I am using a steel 80 cylinder. Now the steel 80 weighs just a few extra pounds heavier than what an aluminum 80 does. So in all honesty, I've probably got about eight pounds on grand total. So eight pounds for a tri-laminate dry suit in a full double fleece or double layer fleece jumpsuit for an undergarment. And with all this water in the suit, I still had zero issues getting trimmed out, staying neutrally buoyant and doing my skills. Now, the reason I wanted to make this video is to answer some questions that we've had of what happens. Can a diver swim up? Does he need to ditch his weights? As you can clearly see, not only did I do a vertical ascent during an emergency, I also did a horizontal ascent. So if you were doing this, you were on a tech dive and you needed to do decompression stops, you could still make that horizontal safe ascent. Now, one thing that I will state because the suit was flooded with water, though it didn't really manipulate the buoyancy and how much I weigh, what it did do, it made it a little bit more difficult to purge the water out as I was inflating the suit. So I did have to primarily control my buoyancy with the BC, but even when I did the test with just the suit itself, I was still able to get neutrally buoyant and stay perfectly trimmed. And that's once again, with a soft plate, with six pounds worth of weight and about two extra pounds in, in weight ratio between say an aluminum 80 and a steel 80. And I had absolutely no difficulties whatsoever. But if you wanna see how much water's in my suit, let's find out together. As you can see, I am completely drenched. My shirt is completely drenched. And we're gonna see, and right now, as you can tell, all the water has rushed down to my legs. So obviously the entire suit was flooded, but as I was purging it through, doing the skills, it pushed some of that water out. But right now, all the water is down here in my legs. Let's see if we can get some of it out. I do have a little bit of water here in my arms. 
which is to be expected. I'll tell you one thing, having a wet dry suit and a wet undergarment does make it harder to get off. A little bit of water out here. Let's see if we can get water out of this suit. But one leg. There you go, guys. Can you dive with a catastrophic failure in a dry suit? Absolutely. Now, would you continue your dive? No. You're gonna go ahead and board and surface with your buddy, but it's not something that you should really fear if it happens. You can still get neutrally buoyant. You can still make a slow and safe ascent to the surface without panicking. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. If you think I could have stayed dry any other way, let me know down in the comment section below, but I'm gonna go get changed out. Guys, if you did like this video, please share it. I want others to learn that dry suit diving does not have to be fearful. There's a lot of bad things that can happen, but it doesn't really affect your ability as a diver to stay safe underwater and to abort that dive safely. But guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.